record this. Okay, I think I see a little red blinking light. So let me just double check, make sure I'm the only face popping up. Um, welcome everybody. So here's this video. It's meant to teach you about the proper way to organize your main points in a paper. Okay, so as everybody can see, I have got eyes, right? Lowercase eyes, if you can make those out, it looks pretty ugly all put together like that. I've got a bunch of ones, a bunch of twos, a bunch of threes, and a bunch of Cs. Okay, this ugly looking document is meant to symbolize what your paper looks like, you know, all summer, or, uh, synthesized and put together, you know, nice and neat like. Okay, so beginning eyes is the beginning of your introduction, middle eyes is the middle of it, bottomizes the conclusion. Okay, so we're gonna skip introductions and conclusions largely. We'll talk a little bit about them throughout the, the video and this discussion, but I wanna focus on these right here. Okay, because it is these right here, these main points in the middle that people become freaked out when they start writing and when they start trying to speak. For some reason, we can do the intro. I always start out with an attention getter. I've got to give my thesis or my purpose and preview. I know that in conclusion, I summarize. What the heck do I do with all of this stuff? Right, so let's get an answer for that. And you can see on my slides here, I, I've got a bunch of text you can read, but I think it is a much more simple way to look at it like this, okay? Every time you begin a main point, you follow a process, okay? We know that in our speech, overall, the intro is meant to do something. And what is that? It's meant to preview, okay? Let me throw in some Vs here. All right, so using the tech I got, if I had a blackboard or a whiteboard, I would draw big arrows across the whole speech, right? You get to the end of your introduction, it's meant to show you what the rest of the paper is gonna be about, what the rest of the speech is gonna be about. Well, what's interesting is when you get to your main points, you do the exact same thing, okay? And not just because it's formal, not just because, you know, I said to, but because there's a good reason for it. Okay, so give me a second here. Let's, let's type this out. Okay, and this happens every single main point that you have. Okay, so if you've been following along, I've been using the, ex the anime example. All right, I wanna persuade people to watch anime. Well, up here in my introduction, I give you my purpose, right? I say, hey, my goal today is to get you to watch anime. And here's how I'm gonna do it. So I give you my three main points. I'm going to teach you about the characters. I'm gonna teach you about the cool cultural differences you can learn about. And I'm gonna give you your own list of anime to watch. Okay, preview shows what the whole paper is gonna be about. Now we jump down here and we preview again. Okay, and that seems like a little bit of a weird waste of time, but remember, this is all for our audience. We know our speech topics better than anybody else in the world. Why? Because we're the only ones who have seen it and worked on it. So even though it all makes sense in our head, and even though a preview here makes it seem like, well, I just did that, remember that your audience is trying to listen to you. They're trying to interpret things for the first time. Okay, so much like when you see a teacher and you're in class, you get greeted with a slide. Okay, I give you a slide and I say, here's a bunch of M&Ms. And you're like, what the heck are these M&Ms for? What's he doing with these M&Ms? Why am I seeing some kindergartner shapes here? Okay, there's some text. This thing's bold and underlined. The rest of it's not. Oh, he's got a header up here. Your eyes are going all over the place. You're trying to read it. What's this say? Well, wait a minute. Before I understand what this says, what is it about? We do that when we're listening to public speakers too. Okay, our brains are all over the place. As audience members, it is super hard for us to gain all of this information all at the same time while trying to listen to a speaker. They're throwing a bunch of stuff at us, putting slides up, moving around. It's a lot. Okay, so what this preview here, even this very first one is meant to do is to simply make it easier for the audience. Okay, all right, so preview up in the introduction. Hello everybody, my purpose today is to get you to watch anime and I'm gonna do that by teaching about characters, teaching you about the cool cultural differences you can learn and by teaching you, giving you your own list of anime to watch. Okay, let's begin. 
So as I said, first off, we really need to start talking about the cool characters that you can get from watching anime. Okay, notice this preview did not say the exact same thing in the exact same way as we did here. Okay, you start to talk a little different. You don't treat your audience like you're stu they're stupid. You don't say copy, paste, say the same thing so they get it. You say it in a little bit different way, but you're still doing the same thing. This preview right here is about the entire speech. This preview is only about this main point. Okay, so help center your audience with where you're at. Right now, we're gonna talk about cool characters. Okay, what do you do with all of the body of the main point? Well, you give your arguments, you give your examples, you give your reasoning, or you give your support. Okay, so main point one, cool characters of anime. So my first line here is my preview. This is what we're gonna talk about. This right here then becomes all of the sub points and examples I'm gonna use. If my main point is anime characters are cool, my second and middle of the body of the main point is Aaron, Attack on Titan, um, Deku from My Hero Academia, Light and L from Death Note, right? And I give examples and I talk about why they're cool and cool things you get from them that you don't get from other shows, okay? And all of a sudden now, the entire main point's written itself. You give your few examples you had, you previewed them, let people know you were about to do it. So what do you think we should do here at the end? Well, we summarize, okay? And much like I've got my Vs pointing down, I'm gonna put my, whatever this carrot pointing up sign is, okay? Now we summarize what we just talked about. Okay, much like your intro here previews the entire paper and your conclusion summarizes the entire paper, you follow the same format in each of your main points. Okay, preview, arguments, summarize. Guess what, crazy. What do you think you do when you get to main point two? Preview, arguments, summarize. Do it again, main point three, arguments, summarize. Okay, so let's talk about what summarizing means really quick because many of you have been taught wrong and I don't know where this started and somebody somewhere deserves a butt kicking that they were told that they started teaching students that summarizing means say exactly what you just said and maybe change a couple words. That is not what summarizing is, okay? We're not just repeating ourselves. We're putting everything into perspective for our audience. Remember, in the real world of public speaking, you're not just talking for two minutes, okay? Your presentation could be, your presentation could be 15 minutes, it could be an hour. And if it's an hour, that means that you have been talking about main point one now for 15 minutes, okay? For those of you sitting in my class right now, 15 minutes ago, I'll bet you you don't know exactly what I was talking about. We've covered a lot already, right? So that's quite a bit to ask of an audience to remember all of the main points that you made about all these characters. Well, why are we talking about cool characters and the things they're doing and that some dude can punch a monster and kill it one punch? I have no idea. Remind me as an audience member, okay? So instead of just saying, now let me repeat myself, say, okay, cool. So now that I've shown you all of these cool characters, I want to remind you that my point in doing so was to demonstrate to you that anime characters have the ability to do things other characters and other mediums don't. Okay, because you can simply draw an anime character, they can fly, they can jump over things, they can run faster than a camera can capture, and you could show all that through a little bit of color and ink. All of this put together is to show you, you should watch anime because the characters are blinking awesome, right? Now, you didn't just say what you said. You put all of this into perspective. You reminded them what your purpose was to show that there are cool characters, but you reminded them why you wanted to show them there's cool characters in the first place by reminding them of your purpose up here, that the whole reason you need to know there's cool characters is to know that anime is worth watching.
Now rinse, repeat. Moving on to main point two, it's time to start talking about the different cultural, uh, the cultural differences that exist between American and Japanese media. Okay, a lot of people don't know what I mean by that. So blank, blank, blank. So here are some examples, blank, blank, blank. And I'm giving all my argument as examples and cool things of why there's differences and what you'll learn and know, blah, blah, blah. Summarize. So now I've taught you how there are literal different requirements for Japanese anime to air on their television as opposed to our television standards here in America, which means that better content hits Japanese shows than American shows. Blah, blah, blah. I just summarized all this. All of this is to say you should give anime a chance. Lastly, let's move on to talking to you and giving you your own list of anime to use. Give them the list and why it's a cool list and summarize. Now I've given you a list of anime. I, I've given you different tastes and preference for whatever kind of person you might be. Now you know that not only is anime cool to watch, but that you have your own list of things you could watch today. Ta-da, right? I recognize it's super nitty gritty. I recognize that, you know, we're going super in depth here, but that's all your main points are. Preview every single time you start talking about one, give your arguments, summarize, not repeating what you just said, but putting it all together in a way that reminds people what the whole point was about and why it helps support your purpose. Do it two or three times. And now it's time to conclude and your whole speech is just about written. Okay, so I said down here, you know, conclusion, it's all about summarizing. Here's the cool part with this and where a lot of people don't know what to do and where they go wrong in conclusions. We'll talk about this more this week, but then you actually go into synthesis one last time and notice the shape of the arrows. It all repeats again. Now you give the classic, if you've ever heard somebody say, so what? You're just telling people how now to use this information to then go into the world and do the cool thing you wanted so that they can come and they can listen to you speak on another topic someday and hopefully they gain something from this one. Okay, that is writing. Okay, that works for papers. That works for speeches. Okay, so I, I hope this is beneficial to you but I'm gonna open it up for some class um, questions. Anybody got any?